Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplist, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at A Ballad of an American, a graphic biography of Paul Robeson, art and text by Sharon Rudall, edited by Paul Buell and Lawrence Ware, published by Rutgers University Press in 2020. Content notes for racist violence, blackface minstrelsy, World War II hate symbols, cheating, and pressure to not divorce. Not my first Sharon Rudall read. To learn more about her, check out my review of her other book, A Dangerous Woman, a graphic biography of Emma Goldman, a figure that also makes a guest appearance in Paul Robeson's life as well. Keywords that came to mind reading this graphic biography are coming of age, talent, international solidarity, disability, class, Hollywood, theater, and Red Scare. The official summary and promo is, quote, the first ever graphic biography of Paul Robeson, Ballad of an American charts Robeson's career as a singer, actor, scholar, athlete, and activist who achieved global fame. Through his films, concerts, and records, he became a potent symbol representing the promise of a multicultural, multiracial American democracy at a time when, despite his stardom, he was denied personal access to his many audiences. Robeson was a major figure in the rise of anti-colonialism in Africa and elsewhere, and a tireless campaigner for internationalism, peace, and human rights. Later in life, he embraced the civil rights and anti-war movements with the hope that new generations would attain his ideals of a peaceful, an abundant world. Ballad of an American features beautifully drawn chapters by artist Sharon Rudall, a compelling narrative about his life and an afterword on the lasting impacts of Robeson's work in both the arts and politics. This graphic biography will enable all kinds of readers, especially newer generations who may be unfamiliar with him, to understand his life story and everlasting global significance. Ballad of an American, a graphic biography of Paul Robeson, is published in conjunction with Rucker University's centennial commemoration of Robeson's 1919 graduation from the university. End quote. Looking at the art and page layouts, Rudolph's style is extremely dense and it sometimes can feel a bit overwhelming. This wouldn't always be my thing, so perhaps I'm being a bit hypocritical, but the way Rudolph does it feels like it's just part of her style. It's a maximalist and she pulls it off well. Writing-wise, I thought that Rudolph did something really interesting in not only fully profiling Robeson and not just hitting the highlights, I also appreciated how this book reflected Robeson's goal to build solidarity across lines like race and country, which were and are a big deal. I also appreciated the way that Rudolph didn't gloss over the health and mental health related struggles Paul Robeson, particularly at the end of his life, faced, although they probably warranted a bit more discussion, and that is one of the shortcomings of trying to organize the book as just a reportage of the facts with little analysis. Reading Ballad of an American, I couldn't help but hearken back to Knockout, the story of Emile Griffith, a translated biography originally published in French, as well as Red Rosa, a graphic biography of Rosa Luxemburg by Kate Heavens, and Ginger Goodwin, a worker's friend by Laura Ellen. Or at least I feel like these different graphic biographies provide a really interesting perspective on, albeit largely so-called North American, history of the early 1900s. There are, of course, also a rising number of pieces on Robeson himself in various different mediums, including podcasts, video documentaries, books, and now graphic novels. Looking at gender and sexuality, I wasn't too surprised to come across fairly dated ideas and behavior when it comes to relationships, and I do think it's important not to gloss over when people from the past that we admire did shitty things to people close to them. And as usual, I would like to asterisk that queer people have lived and loved in a multitude of ways throughout all space and time, even if we aren't always represented as such. Race, cross-racial solidarity, and class seem to have been fairly central to Paul Robeson's heart and mind. A fairly unique individual, Robeson's perspective and actions can be pretty inspiring, in my opinion. Robeson's life is, as a performer also ties in themes of having our bread and our roses, which is certainly an oft-overlooked aspect of things. To conclude, Far from biased, myself. I would say that Paul Robeson being himself gets at least a star for existing and, of course, for not letting him be forgotten. Otherwise, I do think this is a really interesting and well-done graphic biography, which I would rate five stars. I hope there will be more, or at least that he will show up in more nonfiction graphic novels, not because I don't think this book does him justice, but just because I appreciate having a diversity of perspective. Bye, y'all. Keep reading and organized and capitalist 
oppression. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation, 